Welcome, friendly viewers, to today's Science and Spirituality and part two of our program featuring Dr. Teresa Ibis of the U.S., a physicist, alchemist, Kabbalist, co-founder of the Universal Kabbalah Network and founder of Indigo Bridge in Service, or IBIS. Dr. Ibis is also trained as a Celtic shaman and advanced ritual master of the Brotherhood and Sisterhood of Light in the lineage of King Solomon. Teresa Ibis has a PhD in physics and specializes in the fields of sacred geometry, true alchemy, and personal growth, among others. Today, Dr. Ibis delves more deeply into the philosophy and science of alchemy and explains the concept of the seven stages of transformation, which she says can be applied to both the physical and spiritual planes to produce constructive change in our lives and the world around us. Alchemy is, is the study of and the science and art of transformation. So how we can transform anything from a base state to a more elevated or perfected state. Mm -hmm. That's the most simple definition we could give alchemy. They have identified a pattern of, of steps that anything when it's going from point A to point B will follow and it will go through these various stages as it transforms uh, from uh, a, a state that has impurities to it into a state that has um, more perfection. Whether you're applying it at a spiritual level, at a psychological level, at a physical level, you can see the same pattern showing up. Dr. Ibis says that alchemy's roots may be traced to Europe and Asia, and that both the Western and Eastern schools of alchemy employ the same underlying formulas because both are based on observing natural processes and how nature transforms mind and matter. Take evolution, for example. Evolution will go through those same stages. But what alchemy does is it takes evolution and it applies our own consciousness, our own intentional involvement in that process of evolution. And from understanding the pattern at a scientific level, we can then interact with the evolution and speed it up. Words like calcination and disillusion and separation mm -hmm. are still used today in modern chemistry. Modern chemistry, modern physics, modern pharmacology and medicine, all these things are branches out of what used to be alchemy. Uh -huh. uh, so alchemy paved the foundation uh, for all of our modern sciences, including psychology. The basic theory that says there's seven stages of transformation so the first stage, let's apply this at just a consciousness level, like how we can transform our own consciousnesses psychologically. Calcination, for example, is the burning of the ego. So you go out there in life and some event happens, you know, someone you know, says something rude to you or, or gives you a piece of feedback that maybe wasn't so gentle <laughs> and your ego gets really burned and inflamed and, and uh, it, you might get angry you know there's a lot of fiery energy and and mm -hmm. yet there's that like kind of pain of of having to suddenly face yourself uh -huh. um, so the calcination is the burning of the ego and usually that then starts the process the calcination like starts the fire and the transformative process within us uh -huh. from there we wind up getting um, some of the emotion comes up right whether it's sadness that they really think that about me or or I'm not good enough or whatever the subconscious patterns start to rise up to the surface and we become very disillusioned uh -huh. and so that next stage is called disillusion where you're dissolving that part of the ego that was burned mm -hmm. uh, and you're dissolving it into the waters of the subconscious mind mm -hmm. and then the next stage would be for us to go into separation trying to gain some clarity and, and allow our our mind and our reason to come in and go okay well this is this is true you know i'm going to be honest with myself and say yeah i have an issue here and and okay so where do i need to clear it up and where did it come from so you're separating out what do i want to keep what do i want to get rid of what well, after you go through some purification of those pieces that you're separating out uh it's really you know like who am i and what am i here for then you start coming to a level of clarity and you've let go of some of the hurt and you've let go of some of the emotional attachments and then you, you kind of bring your pieces back together and you, you form this new sense of self. At this point, awareness of a new self-identity is a temporary state. 
To remain in the higher state, one still needs to practice to consolidate the new self. And so the next stage is to allow it to mature. Mm -hmm. And that maturing is what they call fermentation. You're maturing that new sense of self. After you reach a certain level of, of maturing, then you go out into the world and you, you are met with new challenges and things that can reflect back to you where there's still some refinement to be done. Mm -hmm. and so there's more of a subtle level of refinement and purification and allowing that new um, self to, to distill mm -hmm. and to really become uh, more pure. Uh -huh. and, and part of that has to do with walking the talk and, and living right. in integrity with the new beliefs and so forth. And ultimately, after many, many rounds of that purification and, and distilling of that new sense of self, you will come to the, the congealing of it. It is integrated as a part of who you are. And you don't have to be consciously trying to strive towards something anymore. Right. It's just you. When science and spirituality returns, Dr. Teresa Ibis will provide examples of how she applies alchemy in her work. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Science and Spirituality, where Dr. Teresa Ibis is discussing how she applies alchemy, the ancient science and philosophy of transformation, to her work. My work with alchemy, um, for the most part, has been in the spiritual realm uh -huh. to help people uh, not only to improve their own spiritual life, but to improve their lives in general at a real practical level. You know, taking those principles and applying them into life, applying them into your job and into your relationships and, and um, into your own personal growth. I have also done work with uh, creating herbal elixirs mm -hmm. and working the alchemy pro um, processes on plants and, and so forth. And my, my aim is to ultimately bring the, the alchemical process into laboratory type research, uh, mm -hmm. not just for working with herbs to create medicines, for, but for really bringing in uh, scientific research guided by alchemical principles mm -hmm. and methods. Uh, I think that using these methods, we can really start to take our technologies to a level that is more holistic, more sustainable, more beneficial, mm -hmm. and create new ways to, to tap into energy that is all around us mm -hmm. in the vacuum and, and uh, bring that energy forward in a way that, that can help us to uh, unpeg from the oil uh, dependency that we have. Dr. Ibis says that like her, many others around the world are also working to advance society and science through alchemy. So yeah, we had uh, the alchemy conference uh, last October uh, we had Dr. Emoto and Don Miguel Ruiz and Nassim Haramai. We had a, a really amazing people come forward to, to speak and to share from the different approaches how that process of transformation is being applied, uh, mm. whether it's into individual lives or at a scientific level, and how we can become aware of we're really at this amazing time on the planet. We're at this like event horizon of making another big leap forward in our scientific theories and how we relate to uh, or apply those into our lives and and the paradigms that we embrace mm -hmm. for what we're here for and and what role we play in the grand scheme of things are we separate or are we connected is it just a materialistic world or or is there you know this side where we actually have an active role to play in how things you know manifest through high-resolution photographs of frozen water crystals, Dr. Emoto has shown that prayer, blessings, and strong feelings physically change the crystalline structure of water molecules. And since the human body is largely composed of water, Dr. Emoto's fascinating discovery implies that our thoughts and emotions have a direct impact on our overall health. I think that Dr. Emoto has um, done an amazing Thing for the planet to just bring awareness and some form of um, 
visual representation right. of how energy really does translate itself into the patterns that we see in nature and into the way that that macroscopic you know things grow like the water and how water really holds memory and is is very receptive and susceptible to the energy that is that is exposed to it. I think that he's done a, an amazing job because we're 70% water and our earth is 70% water and if we can start becoming more conscious of how our energy and our thoughts affect that water mm -hmm. and affect us, yeah. you know, it's, it's great good. Dr. Ibis would like to redirect the current course of scientific thinking so that all research is done with a pure, noble purpose in mind. I have a lot of admiration uh, for those, those scientists who have the bravery, the courage to branch away from the mainstream and, and the pressure of credibility within that mainstream of science and really pursue what they believe is um, a path with heart mm -hmm. and something that can really help humanity mm -hmm. in a more holistic and sustainable way. Like many of us, Dr. Ibis clearly sees the great potential of young people to follow pioneering new paths in the sciences that can uplift our world. In the younger generations, the, the people who are, who are going through the system now and being educated right. in science, I've definitely seen more open-mindedness, more interest in other areas. The younger generations of scientists are not as willing to just put the blinders on and go into tunnel vision mode. Right. They like diversity. You know, they have many different interests, and I think that right. that diversity is leading more towards more and more interdisciplinary work right. and collaboration and more openness to uh, alternative ideas. Through their devotion to working for the betterment of humanity, Dr. Teresa Ibis and other broad-minded researchers are introducing their fellow scientists to fresh, new ways of viewing humankind and the universe. We applaud Dr. Ibis's goal of uniting the timeless philosophy and spiritual discipline of alchemy with modern science, and thank her for taking the time to speak with us about her thoughtful work. For more information on Dr. Teresa Ibis, please visit www.universalkabbalah.net forward slash IBIS. Blessed viewers, thank you for your company today on Science and Spirituality. Coming up next is words of wisdom after noteworthy news. May the light of heaven shine upon you. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash ss.